Hey, what's up, world, and welcome to episode 130 of the Take One Podcast. I am your host, August C. Jones, and today, this episode, we have some, we have a few things to talk about. We got some trailer reviews to talk about, well, trailers to talk about. I'm going to review them, give you my thoughts, as well as we got, like, a little bit of movie news, then we're going to get on to the box office and what's new to rent on the stream, and then we have one movie review. I haven't done a movie review in some weeks now and it's about damn time that i do one so i'm gonna you know just at least get you one it's just been real hectic my life has been real hectic but i'm gonna try and go ahead and get through this so let's go ahead and jump right into trailer reviews so a very significant trailer dropped last week uh and it was it chapter two came out with his first teaser trailer now this trailer looks pretty good i looked at it just right before i press record on this uh on this microphone and everything and yeah even like last week i really did like the trailer and i liked it like even more now i guess you could say i mean the trailer it just basically all it was it just it starts off with a scene where you got beverly a grown beverly going back to her old apartment where you know she used to stay at with her father and everything else and there's an old lady occupying it now and so she sits down to have a conversation and tea with the lady but this lady slowly starts to give off creepily just weird vibes and uh <laughs> and then sooner you know it she ends up finding out that this is it coming back to basically get them and then that's when the trailer gets going and one of the things that i was like uh, just thinking about as i was watching this trailer so this lady she has something in like her chest it just all just weird as hell just weird as all hell and so she said she got cookies coming out the oven or she put cookies in and she's gonna make some I would have been like, after seeing that, like, I ain't about to, <laughs> I ain't about to eat nothing that you making. Like, that's just, like, truly just disgusting. But, hey, I mean, this trailer, I could see that it was like, that scene was basically kind of cut up a little bit. Uh, from my, I think from what I've heard, it's just, this scene had a lot more to it. And what was it, CinemaCon or something when they showed the actual scene or whatever? And it looks a little chopped up. It looks like there were certain things, certain lines of dialogue, more to this scene than what we were given in this trailer, which I don't mind or whatever. It's not, I'm not counting against it or anything like that. I don't mind it at all. Uh, but, I mean, it did look creepy. It did look creepy. You got an old lady that's saying that nothing ever truly dies. And then just kind of just stares at you. And then just like goes back to normal. Like like she didn't just like stop for like 10 seconds. And that's just creepy. But but just to look at all the Loser Club members grown up. And them going through, you know, trying them dealing with uh, Pennywise again years later and all this stuff. It looks crazy. I don't know how far they're going to take this because... I mean, it kind of looked like they're going to go crazy with it because the first one, they went crazy with it. This one, it was like they could go crazy or, you know, like uh, <laughs> what's do, uh, what the guys say up in uh, uh, us, go crazy, and, you know, something like that. You want to get crazy? We could get crazy. So, I mean, that was just horrible. But anyway, now the trailer looked really insanely good um when i saw pennywise at the end of the trailer it just i don't know it made it made the trailer i guess you could say it made it more so it got me a little bit more excited to see this movie and just wanting to know what other tricks they got him um you know for him to do i have my review out on the first it movie uh that came out couple years ago what was it like 2017 yeah 2017 and i even say it up in there and i still would go behind it and just say that like yeah i i I liked it it just wasn't i didn't jump over the moon like everyone else did but i did enjoy it it just i didn't think it was like 
super duper crazy. It was a lot of problems that I had with it. But hopefully I don't have the same outcome. Well, hopefully this movie don't have the same outcome that it the first one did for me or whatnot. But it did it does look crazy and it got me a it got me a little bit more on board for this movie than I was before because I in a sense I really wasn't I don't know, like, I mean, like I said, the first one didn't wow me, so I wasn't super duper excited for this one. But after seeing this, it got me excited, I guess you could say. So I'm happy about that. And yeah, that's really all I got to say about the trailer. Yeah, that's really it. So the next trailer that I'm going to talk about is Maleficent mistress of evil now i when we first got the news about you know maleficent coming out this year a little bit earlier and everything else and that uh just we got the title and the poster and everything mistress of death it was like a lot of everybody <laughs> a lot of everybody wow uh just all of us was like wondering what does that mean is that it's talking about her is that talking about maybe a new threat in the movie now this is from coming from a guy that haven't seen the first film i do have plans on watching i am gonna watch it more than likely before the movie comes out but i, I know that they portray her in a sense kind of as a good guy or you know pr the protagonist or whatever or i guess you could say kind of like anti-hero or something like that but nonetheless she's not purely an evil entity she's not the bad guy of you know just the the film or whatnot i mean of course the movie is called maleficent but um so i guess you could say this kind of answers the question because this is more of kind of like a teaser it doesn't really show anything of like what the synopsis or what this movie is just completely about but I guess from this teaser, I can gather until we get more information that this is her descent to just kind of like the darkness. Like the first movie was just more of her just kind of like she is dark with, you know, she was kind of light, kind of went dark, but still held on to that light. I guess you could say that this movie is her just descension into the dark side. You know, dark side of the force and everything else. I mean, you know, you know what I mean. Just making a joke. Uh, but in any case, like, I mean, that's what I kind of got from this. Though I could be taking it out of context because it is just a teaser. And like teasers, what do they normally do? They're teased. They just throw stuff at you just to give you a taste of something. It's just the appetizer or whatever. So that's basically what this movie was, what this trailer was. And it looks, it looks interesting. It really does. It really, it, this, just like the It Chapter 2 trailer, this got me on board to actually want to see this movie. And I am, I'm a little bit, I guess you could say I'm a little bit really on board to seeing this movie. I, ne I wasn't interested in seeing the first Maleficent, but definitely I am in seeing this. When I watch the first Maleficent, it may end up being very close to the second one because I don't want to watch it right now. <laughs> and, you know, it'd be like, you know, it's really good. I, I find it really good. Like, oh, my gosh, I want to see what this second one do. And then I have to wait months, you know, so I'm probably watch it closer to the release date of the uh, second one. So, but. It looks crazy. It looks good. The whole look just um Angelina Jolie looks just drop dead gorgeous. She looks beautiful. And just like her whole outfit, her new outfit that she got and like, you know, her new costume, whatever you want to call it. It looks awesome as well. The the special effects look crazy. It looks like they got a little bit better with it. I mean, it is Disney, of course. So I'm not about to be sitting here but like, "Oh, I'm surprised." No, no. <laughs> you're only surprised. Yeah, you're only surprised with Disney if they top themselves, and not even really because you know Disney is gonna always top themselves. But they get top of the line, not all the time, not all the time, but they do with a lot of their major films. But it looks crazy. It looks really good. I like the trailer. It's a teaser, but I really, really did enjoy it. And yeah, I'm really excited. 
That's all I gotta say about that. And that ends trailer review. So let's go ahead and jump right into movie news. And so in movie news, we're gonna talk about John Wick 3 and the Rotten Tomatoes and everything else. And then we're gonna talk about uh, Godzilla, the King of the Monsters and everything that's surrounding around that. So the way it looks, <laughs> John Wick 3 is looking to be an incredible movie. So it is at a 98% or hold on, let me check, let me check. Yeah, 98% on Rotten Tomatoes right now as as I'm doing this right now. So it is an overwhelmingly positive movie. It has an overwhelming just you know, uh, just it's 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 a lot of excitement coming from this movie. I can't even speak, <laughs> but I was kind of worried about this. And the thing is, is the question is that's up in the air is is it going to knock out Avengers Endgame off of its pedestal in the fourth week? <laughs> coming in the fourth week, Detective Pikachu couldn't do it, which I'm gonna touch on that in a little bit. Uh, once I get into the box office segment, but Detective Pikachu could not do it. So it's like it's up to John Wick. Will John Wick deliver that headshot? Will it will he, all his uh gun fool be able to chop down and break down and break apart in game? I think it has a very, very good chance of doing so. I mean, because, like, at this point, it's a lot more people on to John Wick than it was during the first movie and, and even the second movie, you know? So, you're going to have a lot of people really, really clamoring to see this movie and to see that the hype for it is real, that this movie is already at 98% with reviews being like really good for it and just having positive reception and everything of this movie it's gonna do well it's going to do hella well <laughs> it's 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 gonna be man it's it's gonna do good and i'm excited for it because i did like the first one i like the second one even more and then this one just hearing all this stuff it, it gets me super excited i just don't I don't know if I'm going to like it as much as the other two movies or whatnot, but I'm I'm open for it. You know, I'm I'm really am open for it. I hope that I do end up liking it. I hope that it's really good, but it's exciting to hear that it is at a 98%. And this is that's just kind of like news that a lot of us John Wick fans have been hoping for because we don't want to go into this third one and being like, oh, you know, this kind of trash but hey i mean I'm, I'm super excited for it speaking of like positive reception godzilla king of the monsters also have positive reception even though it is tracking at 50 million maybe a little bit more in this movie I, i'm not pretty sure the budget i'm gonna look it up but it has a very, very hefty budget. You can tell just by looking at it. Like it's one of it's one of those movies where you can tell that they spent over a hundred million on this on the effects because they look incredible. And a lot of the reviews out for it look like like basically they they love it. People are loving it. I haven't came across a bad one yet, but so far the the reviews have been mainly positive. And to me, that is exciting. It really is. Because one thing that I was worried about this whole movie was the whole thing of you know, with them having like crazy big monster fights and having like 17 kaiju in the movie it's like how are they gonna balance everything out because for one you want to learn from your mistakes with the whole 2014 godzilla and it seemed like that's what they've done with giving us more monster fights and more 
chaos and 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 city breaking fights and stuff like that but at the same time you need to have characters and stories that we're going to like and get invested in and not just fight 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 monster fight and then humans do some things and then fight 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 monster fight it's like you gotta have something really compelling a great story and i'm just thinking like with all this like hype behind the monster fights they might end up kind of like trying to do a lot more with that and kind of lacking on everything else and with how big these monsters is like how like how do we matter how do the humans matter so i don't know that's one of my big worries about the movie was just that i didn't i don't know if it was going to balance that but from what i'm hearing or you know just the the tweets that i've read i've read i've read i've read because the 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 social media embargo is up just the full review embargo isn't up yet but people are just saying that they really love it they're talking about the final act of the film they're talking about the fights and it's just kind of like everything that you know if you're a fan of godzilla is everything that you would have like hoped for and that brings like that <laughs> that that brings a lot of happiness to me and i this is one of those movies where i will probably go see first and dictate whether i want to not whether i want to take my son or not because i'm not entirely sure well you know way he was a big fan of pacific rim uprising and big monsters and stuff so i think he might be interested in but that had like robots and monsters so but it doesn't have a, a budget for the movie so you can kind of guess it was a hundred and something million maybe somewhere close to about 200 million and then the advertisements for this is just bonkers you see advertisements everywhere you go see an IMAX movie you're gonna see Godzilla you're going to see a Godzilla King of the Monsters trailer before the movie or whatnot. So they're spending, they spent a hefty budget, you know, a hefty amount of the money on the budget as well as marketing. So they're very, I guess you could say they're, they're, they're all in that this movie, I don't think that it's going to do 50 million. I don't. I think that this movie is going to come close to 100 million, maybe even more than that. I, I feel like it's going to be a lot of people that's going to go that might want to go see this movie. I may be wrong. I may be completely wrong, but that's just what I think. I'm excited for this movie, and I believe that a lot of other people are. But with the tracking numbers, yeah, I don't think that it's going to open at 50 million. That I don't know. Like I don't know where they get that from or how they come up with this. But 50 million just seemed like pretty low. I mean, because the first Godzilla, the 2014th one, to start off this whole monster verse, opened in at 93 million. Domestically took in 206 million, well, 200.6 million, and then ended all worldwide with 529 million. And Kong Skull Island, which is part of the monster universe as well, Opening in at 61 million domestically ended off at 168 and worldwide ended off at 566.6 million. So I don't know, like both of those two numbers, even Conesco Island is higher than the projected numbers for this movie. So I don't know. I don't think that because this movie is way bigger than Kong Skull Island. Hell, it's way bigger than the first Godzilla. So I think that they're it's going to make it. It's going to make a lot of money. Will it be very profitable? Who knows? But I know it's going to open at more than 50 million. If it does, then it will be a major flop. A major flop. But hey, we'll see. And so let's leave that alone and jump right into the box office segment. Now, for those who don't know how I do the box office segment, well, it's very simple. So, Basically, every week I give my predictions on what movies I believe will be in the top five. And so I basically go over those uh, predictions or whatever. And then I talk about the movies that are actually in the top five. 
the movies that are coming out this coming weekend and give my predictions for this weekend. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So my predictions last week for this past weekend was that I thought, I sincerely thought, I took a, I took a risk that Detective Pikachu was going to beat out Endgame, that Endgame was going to come in number two, The Hustle was going to be coming in number three, Long Shot number four, and The Intruder at number five. I wasn't that far off. I had some ones that needed to be switched, which is number one and number two and number four and number five. But Endgame came in at number one again, not too far, not too far from number two, but it did come in at number one over the weekend with 63 million, which domestically puts it at 723.4 million. And it's a steady climbing in which worldwide, 2.4 billion wow so detective pikachu came in at number two with over the weekend doing 58 million the hustle came in at number three with a disappointing 13.5 million the intruder did uh 6.6 .6 million and long shot came in at number five with 6.1 million there is a long drop from <laughs> detective pikachu what its weekend number was all the way to the hustle from 58 million to 13.5 million so what stands out my wrong uh, assumption, I thought that Detective Pikachu would have you know, a lot of power behind it to take the number one spot, which, you know, it, it came close. So, it, I mean, they gave it, it had a fighting chance. It came close, but it just didn't do it. What was it like? Uh, uh, close but no cigar, basically, is what it was. And I... It was just, hey, I mean, it, it was a good effort. That's why I believe that John Wick, because by this weekend, Endgame is going to come down like another. And that was another thing that I feel like, because a lot of people are just, like, just kind of staggered about how, you know, how far it dropped. It did 300 and something mil the first weekend, and then the second weekend, 100 and whatever mil, and then now it's at 60, like, uh, uh, God dang it. It said uh, 63 million. And so it's like when you look at it, all three of them are impressive week by week, you know, uh, numbers. The drop offs are what you would expect it. And with Endgame, the only thing that it has going against it, the only thing that Endgame has going against it is just that simply it's it's a long movie. Everybody got it out their system within the first couple weeks or whatnot. And then after that, they just kind of like, people are just kind of dropped off. Like me, I'm, I'm going to go see it one more time. Other than that, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to go see it again in theaters. I saw Infinity War nine times in theaters. I don't, I, I don't have enough energy to go see Endgame again, you know, after this one. I mean, maybe one more time after that, but that's a very, very, very big maybe. But I know I'm going to go see it one more time in IMAX before it leaves IMAX or whatever for good in this theatrical, in the rest of its theatrical run. But yeah, like, I mean, a lot of people are just, you know... They they can't bear more in game. Not that it's a bad movie, but it's just it's it's long, it's tedious, and it has the slow points, which makes it drag. So I feel like that's the only thing that's working against it. And like I said, a lot of people just got it out their system before, so it's kind of two things just playing against it. It's like everybody saw it as many times as they gonna see it, and then it's just you know that length, you know. But, I mean, other than that, that's the only thing that really stood out to me besides Detective Pikachu. I mean, I thought that it would be at a higher rate, but, hey, I mean, it was a, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. But, um, what's coming out this weekend, you ask? Oh, well, let me ask. Let me answer that question for you. So this weekend, we have three major films that are coming now. Uh, one of them I discussed earlier, which was John Wick, Chapter 3, Parabellum. And then we have A Dog's Journey, which is a continuation to, what is it, A Dog's Purpose, I believe that movie was called. Uh, and then we have The Star is also, hold on, The Sun is also a star. I wrote it down wrong. The Sun is also a star. 
And those are the three major movies coming out this weekend. And so, what are my weekend predictions? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me go ahead and answer that for you. So, my weekend predictions for this weekend would be John Wick 3, I believe, will come in at number one. I believe so. I believe the end game will stay, will, will go to the number two spot. A Dog's Journey. I want to I want to put that be I'm gonna take a gamble and put that at number three. Take it a gamble and put that at number three. Pikachu is gonna come in at number four and the hustle at number five. That's my top five and I'm sticking to it. I'm not gonna change it. I'm gonna be so pissed because I believe that a dog's journey is probably not gonna out be Pikachu. But hey, it's whatever. And so. With that said, let's jump right out of the box office segment and jump real quick right into what's new to rent on the stream. Now, what is new to rent on the stream? I'm glad you asked. There are three movies that's coming out to rent on the stream tomorrow as of the time I'm recording this. I don't know what time I'll be able to put this up, but Cold Pursuit is coming to rent on the stream as well as Happy Death Day to you and Fighting With My Family. Two of those movies are good. I have two reviews already for Cold Pursuit and Fighting With My Family. And on part of this podcast is going to be Happy Death Day to You review. And so with that said, let's jump right into the review. And so the movie that I'll be reviewing today is Happy Death Day to You, which is the sequel to Happy Death Day. And it is a slasher sci-fi mystery type of movie. And it is directed by Christopher Landon. And it stars Jessica Roth, Israel Brizard, and Phi Vu. And this movie takes place after the first one where Tree finds herself reliving the days over again after she thought that she did away with that and now she is on a mission to find out why this is happening, how it's happening, and how to stop it. When they come across something that may be the key as to stopping it, her and her friends will stop at nothing to make sure that this is ends permanently now i really do like this movie of course with the first one being the way it was you can expect the kind of comedic horror but not so much a parody it still keeps that humor like the first film but like the first film for me it was hit and miss jessica ruff carries the movie again as the lead and everyone around her does well in their roles as well and the main difference between this movie from the first one is you'll begin to notice that it takes more of a sci-fi turn with the genre how the other film was a comedic horror combination thing this is all the way sci-fi and it's not even really a horror film at all it just really kind of have horror elements like really small horror elements in the movie and speaking of horror elements that aspect takes a backseat and is not even played upon heavily in this movie like it was the first one even with them finding out who the killer was it just really doesn't matter in fact you could have taken it out of the movie and it wouldn't have made it a bit of difference probably would have made it better for it and this movie had an unexpected emotional turn to it that I wasn't ready for. The way it was done was really good though and it was really effective especially relating to something in my life it did kind of get a hold of me to where I had to kind of like keep my composure even my sister had the same type of like feeling while watching the movie and it yeah it, it hit hard and this movie does expand on the main storyline from the first film as well as the personal parts and individual characters like i had just previously mentioned and it does have a part in the movie toward the beginning where like weirdly focuses on the asian kid and then it goes to the main girl. I mean, I get why it was done, but it just really seemed weird for them to do it the way that they did. Especially if it wasn't for that long and you were just going to go to the original girl. Just the way that they really had heavy focus on him made it seem like he was going to be more of a major part than he was. Now, don't get me wrong. He did play a major part in this movie than he did in the first one. But when they did this in the beginning, it was kind of like, 
it's kind of weird, but okay, whatever. But even just that, it doesn't take away a lot of my enjoyment from the film. Now, Happy Death Day is as ridiculous as you would think it would be, especially if you've seen the first one. It has to change the pace from the original, as well as a lot of the other movies that are out around the time, and even now. And like I said, the comedy was hit or miss. It did do some kind of like creative and kind of different things that played around with certain aspects. I did personally like this movie better than the first one. I'm kind of disappointed it didn't do as well as the first one did as far as like the opening weekend and stuff, but I really did enjoy this. And this movie does have a post credit scene. Not going to say what it is, but it wasn't, it, I don't know, it just, it didn't, I didn't really like it too much. It didn't sit right with me, but when you see it, you'll see what I'm talking about. It just, it went a certain route that I felt like, nah, they don't need to do that. But that's all I'm going to say. But with that said, I'll give this movie an 8. And that has been my review on Happy Death Day to you. As well as that is the end of this podcast. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. And um, yeah, I will catch you guys next week. Peace out. Hey, hey, before you guys leave, make sure you hit that like button as well as that subscribe button. And you see that little bell? Make sure you hit that to turn on your notifications. That way you'll be notified for anything that appears on my channel. Hope to see you guys next time. Peace out.